a number of targeted therapies that are coming that people are looking at. And so, Elena, tell us a little bit about this MMP9 animal. Mm -hmm. So MMP9 is being explored as a target in first-line setting. Again, the idea is if there is no pathomonic driver and the majority of the patients are HER2 negative, how do we target the stroma, the microenvironment, uh, and potentiate the effects and permeation of chemotherapy uh, and effect of, of that? It's an interesting study. Um, the, there's a lot of uh, data to support it preclinically, and uh, we would just have to see uh, if the idea sticks. Yeah, if the studies are crude, we're, we shall wait yes, and, and yeah. see. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then, Kohei, we have the anti mm -hmm. What in the world is that? Yeah, this is a very important and interesting target. Crowding anti point 2 is a major structural component in tight junction. It was also expressed in normal tissue in stomach, but more highly expressed in gastric cancer, especially in diffuse histology. Approximately 50% of patients showed a positive staining, and 30% uh, of patients showed a very strong staining of cloud ND.2. And this cloud ND.2 monoclonal antibody cloud doxima uh, showed efficacy as a monotherapy in first in human trial, uh, conducted in Germany, uh, uh, approximately 10% of the response rate as a single agent. So then, a uh, phase, phase two trial was conducted to compare a pyruvine included com uh, standard chemotherapy with or without this cloud oxymap. And it showed a remarkable survival benefit. The hazard ratio is less than 0 0.6 in uh, highly crowding endpoint to express the gastric cancer. But this is a very good survival advantage. So currently, phase three trial is ongoing as a four folks as a controller. Ah, very good, very good. And then, you know, this importance of, of doing some next generation sequencing to identify specific patient populations, potentially rare patient populations, but the FGFR inhibitors for patients with gastric cancer that we're seeing now. You know, Eric, are you are you looking for these patients? What's the? Yeah, indeed, we, we are looking uh, to with NGS, as you said, to different subgroups of patients. We know that FGFR alterations do occur in a small number of gastric cancer patients, and numbers vary a little bit, but around 10 percent, I would say. Um, we have seen some disappointments with some FGFR inhibitors uh, in the past. Uh, there is a new generation of FGFR uh, inhibitors now under investigation. It's not yet clear what's going to be the fate. Uh, we hope that for these subgroups, this subsegment of patients, that uh, the newer generation of drugs, that they will lead to some benefit. Uh, there are many challenges. Uh, one, what is the what is the optimal selection? Should we look at amplification, alteration, whatever? Uh, uh, so that's not yet clear to my knowledge, um, uh, but uh, there are some challenges after some disappointments in gastric cancer um, and some hopes for new drugs. We hope that this will be amongst the drugs that will lead to some success uh, yeah. in this situation. Yeah, and then, you know, immunotherapy. So now we're looking at all different ways to augment immunotherapy. <coughs> Can we do better by using uh, ways to get the tumor to augment its own immune response, but now we're all learning how to have to inject tumors um, in our clinics, or, in, or our gastroenterologists or interventional radiologists are learning this. You know, Yelena, tell us a little about these oncolytic viruses? Well, that's the wave of the future is to, beyond combination of anti-PD-1 and anti-CTLA-4, what are the other novel ways to make the immune system see the tumor? And uh, there's a lot of interest to look at uh, use of oncolytic viruses. It's not prime time uh, at all. It's not even in phase two yet. Uh, and, the, and then tumor vaccines. There are several companies looking at personalizing tumor vaccines. It probably is monotherapy. It's not going to be effective. But in combination with anti-PD-1 therapy, this is where the field is going. Other immunotherapy uh, tactics are very interesting, but maybe quite toxic. I, a lot of my <coughs> patients ask about CAR T cell therapy. It's very difficult to make a, a the directed T cell against solid tumor because a lot of these antigens are in normal organs as well. Uh, but I think the vaccines and the oncolytic viruses is where will be the next positive hit in the future. 
We are currently doing the phase one trial of oncolytic viral therapy uh, for gastric and dysplasia cancer in combination with the PD-1 therapy. So this is an uh, adenovirus uh, only replicated in telomerase positive cancer cell and the result in cancer cell death and activate APC and the CD. This is the concept. So the study is ongoing. Very yeah. exciting, super exciting. You know, the problem with all of these is that they're extremely expensive and really can only be given at centers that have uh, significant expertise. So even though they may be effective, I wonder how disseminated uh, these will be. And uh, I think the problem is that the expense and, and the difficulty in giving these treatments will probably limit them and ultimately will be surpassed by probably things that can come out of the box. Um, so even though I agree with you that uh, it, it, it probably will work in a select group of patients, it's probably going to be difficult to uh, uh, give this to the, the whole population. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, even just to go off topic a little bit, when you look at CAR-T for the approvals, I mean, it's already, we have to learn how to be able to do this well, and I think there's going to be a learning curve uh, with that, too.